trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. That's Psalms 9, verse 10. I don't know what you're going through, but let me tell you, we serve a God who's amazing. Amen. He's amazing. And I know this past week, he's been showing up in my devotion time because I need him. I need him more than ever. Let me tell you, you need him too. So as we continue and listen to what God has for us today, I want you to hold on God's truth. Hold on to it. Because let me tell you, this world's getting, it's getting crazier and crazier. And if you, if you just go through emotions and not live it and not put action behind it, just like the pastor said, it's just words. And that's why we have the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we have the blood of Jesus Christ that comes over us and He us wide as snow. It's just not, it's not the, just the words, there's the meaning and power behind it. Heavenly Father, God, we just ask that you just anoint this place. That you just anoint this place, Heavenly Father, God. That your presence will be here and so real. Open our ears up for what you have to say to us this morning, God. Let all distractions, everything that is going to be far away, God. So we can focus on you, Heavenly Father, God, and what you have to speak, say to us this morning, God. In your mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, who's ready to get in the Word of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, gather yeah, your Bible. I love what Pastor Charity was saying because we are actually going to read Psalm chapter 9. And she said, I want you to go home and read it. Well, hey, you don't even have to go home. You get to go home and read it later as well. But you get to read it right here with every single one of us. So I'm excited for that. So that's going to be Psalm chapter 9. Maybe you don't know how to get there. Just open your Bible right in the middle. A lot of times you'll hit Psalms. So just you got it. You can do it. A little to the left, but you, you can get there. But Psalm chapter 9, and we're going to begin in verse 1. Now, I'm going to ask us all to stand. It's going to be on the screen as well. And I want us to not just read this scripture, but as you hear me read the odd verses, and as you read, the congregation read the even verses, I want you to hear not just the great things. There is some great scripture, just like we heard during worship. There is a great scripture. There are a lot of great scriptures within Psalms. Psalms is a great book. There's a lot of great stuff within this chapter. However, there's a lot of things that we are also seeing in our world today in this chapter. So I want to read all the way up to verse 20. I will read with the odd verses as you in return will read all the even verses. In Psalm chapter 9, starting in verse 1, it says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have bl blotted out their name forever and ever. O oh, enemy, destruction has our future forever. And you have destroyed cities. Even their memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness. And he shall administer judgment for the peoples in the uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord... Have not forsaken those who seek you. Are you putting your trust in the Lord this morning? Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. 
Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers that he does not forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me. You who lift me up from the gates of death. That I may tell all your grace in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation. Verse 15. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made. Did y'all hear that this morning? Yeah. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they have made. In the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the words of his own hands. Meditation is The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the Lord shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, do not let men prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord Jesus. And as there is a lot to unpack, Lord God, we pray for this nation. We pray for where we are. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you, Lord God, will prevail. You will prevail, and we know you will prevail. Lord God, I pray that we will learn to put our full trust, not just part of our trust, but our whole self, full trust in you this morning, Lord God. And not just this morning, but every day, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will move in this place, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. There is a lot of stuff going on in our world today. Amen. Amen. We see it. We hear it. We, we're acknowledging it. We're getting videos of it. We're, we're seeing all this stuff. And so today we're finishing a topic on missions. Everybody say missions. Amen. So today, I don't know what's going to happen if we're going to get recognized or not. I don't care. What I want is God to get recognized. Today we are talking about to save America. The mission to save America. There is so much darkness that is roaming not just America, and if we're being honest, it's our world. We are seeing it in. And so this topic, as we finish today, I want you, church, listen, this is from my heart, to really hear what God is telling us. We know how this book ends. And let me tell you, it is a glorious thing of how this book ends. But it doesn't mean it's going to be an easy ending. It doesn't mean we have to go without, with, without a fight. No, we have to go fighting. Every day, we have to fight for our soul. We've got to fight for our family. How do we fight for our family? By getting on our knees and praying. And so there's an article I was... I literally woke up in bed, and I don't know if you're like me, but I wake up in the morning with my eyes open, and then they close again. Oh, yeah. And then the alarm goes off. And then the alarm goes back on, I open my eyes again, turn off the alarm, close my eyes again. And then the alarm, I, I'm not even kidding, I got like six or seven alarms on my phone, and it just goes on and off, on and off, on and off. Wake and sit, wake and sit, wake every little minute, right? Some of us, I don't know. Maybe I'm the other one. Am I the only one this morning? No? Okay, there's a lot of Okay, there's some of us here. Okay? So that is how I am, though. I am that way where it's like, okay, wake up, sit, wake up, sit. So I got on my phone, I was going through some emails, and I ran across this email. I don't know if you saw this. This just came out. The Senate just passed this bill last night, through the night, sometime. I don't know. I was asleep. But check out this article and what it says. Texas Senate passes resolution to curb China's forced organ harvesting. And in the sign that she's holding says, China, stop murdering for organs. Some of us are saying, what does that mean? If you go on reading this article, and if you want to read it, you can read it. I can send it to you. This article is literally saying life is worthless and it has a price on it. 
If you are dealing with a kidney or an organ or liver or something in your body and you're struggling and you're not sure if you're going to live, what they will do and what the article talks about is how you can pay or they'll go to the prison first and they'll say, this gentleman who is very healthy is worth $80,000. Do you want him or not? Yeah, I, I want his liver. I want his liver. Okay, crucify him. Kill him. Take his liver. Give it to him. Do you see the darkness? Yeah. This is coming to America. It's not just hitting America. It's hitting our home. This other article, many of y'all probably saw this, but some of y'all got this. It's a declaration of local state of disaster. That's for Axcosa County. They're having to up law enforcement. They're having to do certain things because of all the ones coming across the border. I'm not saying people coming across the border is wrong, but we have a process for a reason. Yeah. We have, um, um, I know I'm going to stop on some toes this morning, but I don't care. There is a process for a reason. Amen. There is so much sex trafficking happening. <laughs> We have a Facebook page in our in our community, in our neighborhood that we live. And people are constantly posting, watch out for this person. They're on the side of the street saying they need a tire replaced. Watch out for this person. They're trying to sell clothes. Watch out for this person. You say, well, Pastor, why is that wrong? Just a couple weeks ago, we had someone that was trying to sell clothes. There's a gas station, QT, right next door. A young lady went to look at gas. The man said, hey, I'm selling clothes. Would you come look? And I'm just trying to get some money. And she said, no, 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 thank you. I'm not interested. She went inside, told the cashier. They called the police. It began in a law enforcement chase, finding out that he is a sex offender, not just a sex offender, and not he has warrants out for his arrest. He is an illegal immigrant. He has all of this stuff stacked up against him. You guys, were seeing it in our hometown, in Alaska County, in Little Little Texas. We're seeing the wickedness break through some of our walls and our families' lives. Some of us are saying, close the curtains, don't let the enemy in. Can I tell you, the enemy can get through curtains. What he can't get through is by the call of Jesus Christ. By pleading Jesus Christ, he cannot enter and they must flee. We need to plead Jesus Christ over our homes and be on our knees praying for our families constantly. Now, there was a video, I did not post it because it is, every other word is a foul language. If you have a kid or grandkid, beware. Know what they're doing. Young ones, please, 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 strap on to somebody. I don't care, young one, if they're 60, 70, 80 years old. Strap on to someone that is strong on their faith. Because we are in a world, a whirlwind, that's taking, it kind of reminds me of Wizard of Oz. We're in this tornado that's just taking off. I don't know if you've heard of this TikTok thing, but there was a video that went viral just a few days ago. Yesterday, you know how everybody has a day. There's a day of a muffin day. There's a husband day. There's a date day. There's, there's all these weird days. You know what I'm talking about? I'm saying that. Yeah. Okay? So, yesterday... There was a video going out of a young man just bleeping and bleeping and bleeping. And he began and he said, women, you need to be carrying your knife. Stab a man if he comes near you. They're being told this, our young ones. Why? Why are they being told this? Yesterday was National Rape Day. <clears throat> Many of us don't even know because we're not, there's so much wickedness it's hard to know all the wickedness that's coming in. But young ones, can I tell you to be aware of what you're looking at, what you're watching, what you are consuming? You might not have a peer your age. God might give you one. But that's why it's so important to find somebody that is strong and stable in their walk with God so that when you become weary, you can turn for encouragement and uplifting. There is so much wickedness going on in this world. And yet, if I remember correctly, Jesus was asked once, which commandment of them all was the greatest? Do you know what it is? It's love. Love. He answered, and it says in the word, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. 
The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 through 32, and Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. It speaks on this most important commandment into love. You see, if we ever want to see or help America or our mission is America or to save America, we have to be able to learn how to love like Jesus loved. We have to learn how Jesus loved. What God wants is really quite simple. He wants us, all our service for God. He wants us to give him our all. Romans 8, 8 says that those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You know why there's a supernatural, right? Natural is us. We are the natural. But we cannot become Super without the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's where the Holy Spirit, that's where the supernatural comes. We are the natural, but we need the super behind it. And He brings the super to bring the supernatural. Amen. He will use us. We can't just be in our flesh. We have to give our full self to God. So my first point today is in order to save America, we have to know that He is present. That he is present in every circumstance. Abraham Lincoln said this. The best thing about the future is that it comes one day at a time. The best thing about the future is it comes one day at a time. We aren't going to live. We're not going to win, I should say, the world if we're so focused on 2022. Trump's going to come in August. I'm waiting for it. Oh, this person's coming in 2024. I'm waiting for it. Waiting is not going to do it. God tells us to not put our worries into tomorrow, for today holds its own worries. Are you feeling anxious, depressed, this worriness that's running our world? Don't worry about tomorrow. Make a difference today. And if we can all focus in on making a difference today, and when tomorrow comes, make a difference tomorrow, and when Monday comes, make a difference on Monday. God bless Mondays. They are terrible days. We just need to go straight to Tuesday. Let's, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Come on, some of y'all need to be saying that. Amen. But I want to give you some encouragement. Isaiah 41, 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing the word? You don't have to be alone. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Say, Pastor, I haven't experienced that. Have you given your full self to him? I was just talking with a sister the other day. And we were beginning our talk, and as we were talking, it's like, you better make sure whatever sin you have is ready to be revealed. Because sin is running rampant, and it's only fun for a season. So what is it today that you need to get right with God so He can be present in your life, so He can be where you are, to give you the joy that you need, to give you the strength and peace that you need. My second point is in order to save America, we have to know that he is in the impossible. He is in the impossible. I hope you're taking these notes because you want to learn how to save America, this is it. He is in the impossible. He makes the impossible possible. The things that we don't even realize what can happen, God can do. Have you ever experienced something in your life that God just orchestrates and you're like, wow, only God, only God, only God can do that. Only God can bring them. Only God can bring my daughter back to you. Only God can do this. Only, do you experience that? How God can orchestrate things. Come on, some of y'all need to say amen to that. Because there are some others here that haven't. And they need to hear that I'm not crazy, okay? They need to hear that there's another brother and sister in Christ that is experiencing the orchestrating of what God is doing and what God can do. In order to see America, we have to know that he is in the impossible. It looks impossible from where we are going. 
If we look two years from now in the way we are, it looks very impossible. It looks like we're literally in a spiral. Literally just flush the toilet. It's now spinning in circles to go down the drain. That is what it looks like. It looks impossible. But can I tell you that God is in the impossible? Amen. God is going to do wonders. Revivals are going to break out if his people rise up to the occasion. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things. But remember, we have this condition, and we have to know the condition before we can have the strength that God wants to give us. So we have to really go back in verse 11. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Not that I speak in regard to me, for I have learned in whatever state I am. Are you listening? Amen. Are you learning? In whatever state you are, wherever you are, it looks tragic around you. It looks like you're going down that toilet drain. Whatever the dirt looks like in your life, do you see that Jesus is there? Whatever state I am, to be content. Yeah. To be content. Pastor, it's horrible where I'm at. It might be. But be content. God is working. Amen. Be content. God is moving. Verse 12, I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. Then verse 13 comes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Some of us in verse 12, we see that. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned to be full. Both to abound. That's what we want to edit scripture to be. But that's not what scripture says. Scripture says, everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. In times of joy and in times of trials, and in times of abound, in times of suffering when it doesn't look good, our eyes, church, have to be on God. We have to raise our eyes to him and see what he is doing and what he is doing around us. The best and most beautiful thing in this world cannot be seen or even heard, but must be felt with the heart. It must be felt with the heart. Have you experienced God in the heart like we were talking last week, but he's the center? Have you experienced him? I know plenty of people that have seen miracles and yet they still go on astray. You see it, you hear it, but do you feel it? Do you know it? Do you know the difference when you're suffering and yet you have this smile on your face because joy comes within the morning? Amen. 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 Have you experienced it? My third point is in order to save America, we have to know He is going with you. He is going with you. Deuteronomy 31 6 it says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Even though tomorrow looks drown, drowsy and bleh. Can't even find the word. But you know what I'm saying this morning, right? Okay, good. It looks bleh. It really does. But it says do not be afraid. We do not have to be afraid of what tomorrow brings. Because today... I'm worried about today. Today, I'm on my knees praying. Today, I'm going out and making a difference. Today, I'm sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Today, I'm fulfilling the first commandment, the most important commandment, and that is to love. Amen. Billy Graham once said, the Christian life is not a constant high. I have my moments of deep discouragement, 
I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, oh God, forgive me or help me. Even Billy Graham had to go through that. Even Jesus would go in prayer before he was crucified when he went up the hill and his disciples had fallen asleep. He got away. He got his little time and he prayed. Sometimes we're going to be filled with discouragement. Sometimes we're going to be hurting and we're going to feel down. We all have those days. Not one of us can say we never have those days. But can I tell you, that's where you turn on worship music. That's where you start reading his word. That's where you have a journal and you begin to read what God is saying and what God is doing. That way you get your mind back on track. It's time to remember Stephen thinking. It's time to remember our stinking thinking. And we've got to let God be in our thinking. We do. Sometimes it feels overwhelming and foggy and dark. But Joshua 1, chapter 5, verse 6, it says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Have you ever been in a battle fatigue? Where you feel like you're battling to the point of your breaking point? I remember when I was in middle school and high school football, my coach, we always had a I was on first string, so I was always first string running back, second string quarterback. And I remember every time I'd get on the field, our coach would tell the first string, if you ever get too tired or if you just need a drink of water, go like this. This means you're hot. This means you need to get off and get a drink. And then I would pull you off, I'll substitute you so you can get a drink. So that was our little sign of we're overwhelmed, we're fatigued, we need water, we need, we need a fresh air for one minute to get back on. But I remember there was one game in particular you see my height. I also weighed, I was much skinnier. I was only 120 pounds. And I remember going to one game and there was this boy. He was a boy, but he was a big boy. He was a 300 pound middle schooler, over six feet tall, had to walk around with his birth certificate because no coach believed him, no rep believed him. And so he always had to have to say, hey, I'm okay. Like, you know, he's just that deep voice. And he's on the line. You know he's the one that they always give the ball to. Just tramples over all us little guys and just keeps on. Just walking. He doesn't have to run. Well, the coach knew that me, I have a very high pain tolerance, if you know me at all. And I will push myself to the limit, even when I'm fatigued. And I've had to learn. I am still learning. And I remember, Jacob, get on the front line. Go. So I'm on the front line. And I'm, I'm, I'm down, you know, like the dude's back is right here. And I'm like way down here, you know. I'm doing a little football stance. And they always say get lower than the guy. So I'm like, I'm like, get, get lower than the guy. Get lower than the guy, you know. And I'm doing this little weird stance, getting ready. Like I'm just going to go for those legs and try to get him to go timber. Like here we go, here we go. So the first few times it works, I get his legs. He goes tumbling down. You chop his legs out from under him. They can't, they can't do it, okay? They just can't. These little guys, like me, we just hit those legs and they just go, boom. And it's, just, it's, I mean, it's awesome watching. But anyway, that's what I've learned. But the second play comes, all right, I'm going to do it again. Boom. Second, third play, boom. Fourth play, boom. Man, I'm getting tired. This is not just a little guy that I'm hitting. This is taking all of my energy to knock this force out. And so by multiple, I mean, they're getting inches, yards by yards. They keep getting first down. They keep pushing us. I'm stopping them a little bit, but you know, I ain't enough. But I'm going and I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm doing my best, I'm doing my best. I finally, this guy, he, I was so tired, I was just there. I'm like, okay, here you go. Come up for it. He literally just stands. Doesn't even have to get down at this point because I'm so tired. He stands there, looks at me. The ball is gone, and he literally grabs my pad, my football pass from underneath, and throws me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Like, okay, coach. Coach, please. I can't. I can't. He's like, no, you got it. Keep going. You got it. Just keep going. 
because they took the ball away from them. They, they started going different ways because they weren't doing a lot. They weren't getting far. This big, ginormous guy kept blocking and blocking and blocking. So they're like, okay, we've got to go a different route. So they start going different route. Well, now he doesn't have the football. So now he's using both of his hands to just throw me. <laughs> so I'm there and I'm like, oh, okay, here we are. Just throw me already. Okay, wait, I'm like, that's how it felt. Like, just, okay, here we go again. Here we go. I'm, I'm not even joking. You want the story? It's funnier when my mom tells it because she's sitting on the sidelines. <laughs> No, I'm kidding, she wasn't laughing at me. But it, that's how I felt, okay? That's how I felt. But she's, she, they're just throwing me constantly. And so I finally look at the coach, I'm like, please. Please, coach. He's like, you got it. You got it. And I'm like, coach, please. So one more hit, and I'm down. I'm just like, all right, maybe I should just lay here. Maybe the medics will come out. Maybe they'll actually give me an IV with water, probably or something. I just gotta go. Like, I don't know what else to do. So I look at the coach, and I'm like, coach. And I start yelling. Get me out of here! <laughs> At this point, he's totally just ignoring me. The coach is ignoring me. What kind of coach is that? I'm not yelling, let me get me out! I need water! And he's sitting there. So I don't hear anything. Do you hear anything? You know, sometimes that's what it feels in life. We are so battle fatigued where we're ready when the enemy comes because we're filled. You ain't no, you don't gotta play here. Boom, enemy, no, not anymore. Boom, 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 okay. It's taking a lot out of me. It's taking a lot out of me. It's getting to the point where I can't even get down anymore to fight. It's getting to the point where I'm so discouraged, I don't even, I can't even get on my knees just to pray. I can't even come to my senses to open up scripture to read what the word says. I've come to the point of I'm so exhausted. The enemy is just throwing you, and throwing you, and throwing you, and beating you, and beating you. But can I tell you, just like that story, they had to find a different route. They had to give the football to somebody else. You fight that enemy, and they're going to have to go and flee somewhere else. You fight that enemy. You find the encouragement. You find that brother or sister. That's why I say it is so important to be part of a home fellowship. It is so important because we all need those days to get in the car, to go over to a brother or sister and just cry. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Man. I know men are like, you don't cry. Okay, I do. This man does. And it's okay. Ladies, it's great to have that support beside you, behind you, on your phone to text saying, I'm horrible, I need prayer. That's why it's so important to have those home fellowships. That battle fatigue. George Whitefield once said, we are immortal until our work on earth is done. We are immortal until our work here on earth is done. Our bodies won't live forever. We know that. It's not a good body. It's a good night. I will see you again as a brother and sister. There's a story that's told during a funeral that my father-in-law will share with me. I thought it was so cool. This man was passing away, and if I script the story, it's okay, but you get the where I'm going with it. The father goes to his kids and says, he's, he's passing away, he, he, he knows it. It's within days now. And he tells all of his kids, good night. Good night. Good night. And he gets to the last kid and he says, goodbye. Goodbye. And his son said, Dad, well, you told them all good night, you tell me goodbye, why? Because I know I'm going to see them again. You haven't lived for Christ yet. You haven't given your life to Christ yet. Can I tell you, is it a good night or is it goodbye? Our bodies here are going to fade away. That is reality. Our bodies here as Christians will be persecuted. There's a church in Canada. I don't know if you heard it. It was all over the news. They were not to have church in the building. They were not to have church in the building to the point they had guards fenced off this 
church and had guards standing at the fence. Do you know what that church did? Not one member showed up that Sunday. They went underground. Not literally, I'm sure. But they had a private place that they were able to go and have church. You see, church, we have to become the church. If we want revival, it begins with the church and we are the church. If we want to see change, we have to be the change. And it begins by having that very first commandment. Love. Love God with all your heart. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Even if they do you dirty, you turn the other cheek. What does the Bible say? They hate you, offer your shirt to them? Church, we are to be loving. And yet there's so many churches and Christians that are looking like the world. We have to be the difference. My fourth point, and I'm about to close. Um, I'm already getting done. In order to save America, we have to allow God to define our success. We have to allow God to define our success. Sometimes we think of success. Sometimes we define our success the way we want success. Success is if I finish school. Success is if I get my doctor's degree. Success is if I can do this or that. Success is these things that we place in our life. Now, they're not wrong to have those, but our success needs to become God's success. We have to let God define our success. And the only way you're going to become who God wants you to become is to go through those trials and learn to get on your knees, whether you're hungry or you're full. Whether you're abound or whether you're hurting. We have to learn to pick up our phone and to text someone and say, pray for me. That's why it's important to fellowship. We have to let God, we have to let our God define our success. What is God saying is successful in your life? Are you doing what you're doing of your desires or is it God's desires? Are you, are you independent or are you dependent on God? Psalm 12, 8. I'm going to move a little faster here, so get your notes ready. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. We see it today. We need to live a life of integrity regardless of what society promotes. Regardless of what society says is the end thing, we have to stand firm on the truth. Don't let these lies of this world enter in and become our lies. Proverbs 11.3 the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. And then my last point. It's not about America. It's about where God is taking us and what he is doing. When we allow God to be defining our success, when we allow God to be within the impossible, when we allow God to be in the midst of it all, that it's not about America. It's about where God is taking us and what He is doing. We are to rise and be a voice. We are to stand and we are to fight. But we don't do it out of vileness, out of wickedness, out of hate, out of pain. We do it out of love. We do it by being like Jesus. And if we can get that in our heads and engraved in our souls, we will see America and the world change. To stand up and we have to be a voice. 
Charles Spurgeon once said, I'd rather teach one man to pray than ten men to preach. In our world today, with social media the way it is and everything, we all want to be preachers. I'm not talking physical preachers at the Bible. I'm talking preachers on social media and pushing our agenda. But if we can just learn not to just be a preacher and be preachy at people, but to learn to pray, there'll be a difference. If we can learn how to get on our knees in a time when we get, need to get on our knees, in a time to stand when we need to stand, there'll be change. Saving America has nothing to do with America because it isn't our God. If we want change, we have to live for Christ and get rid of the darkness in our life. Be the disciple. Be a disciple that Christ has called us to be. And go out and make more disciples. Don't ask God to come into your corner, I think so many of us will say, God, come into my corner. God, come into my corner. God, I need you. I need you. God, I'm here. Where are you? God, why are you not showing up right here? But God is saying, I'm right here. Trust me. Come to me. Stop trying to yank him into your corner when you need to get up and go to his corner. What is the difference? You invite someone into your home, what do you get to do? You can kick them out. I'm going to bed. Like, go home. Right? But God's saying, come home. And when he calls you home, you have to make that decision saying, I'm going. I have to get in the car. I got to start the car. I got to drive to where God's taking me. I got to turn off the car and not just circle back around the block. I have to get out of the car and I have to meet Jesus where he is. We have to stop trying to meet Jesus in our corner and become in his corner. Maybe you're still a little confused on things in your life. Can I encourage you to pray and to fast? Pray and fast for what God wants in your life. Pray and fast that God will lead this country and this world where it needs to go. There's a word that is going around with uh, a lot of pastors and prophets and prophets. The word is acceleration. We're seeing a lot of acceleration take place within our world. Church, if we don't accelerate, we're going to die out. It's like you in a car. You accelerate in your car. What does the person do that's jogging behind you? They do this. get smaller and smaller and smaller, further and further. Church, if we do not accelerate, we have to accelerate. And can I tell you, church, there is still time for us here at Grace Bible Church and for many other churches for people to rise up to become the revival that God is calling for. We are to have that revival once again. It might not look like the revival that once was, but that's okay. If it's revival, it's revival. If God is in it, God is in it. If people are moving because they want more God, it's good. Psalm 23, 3. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? 2 Peter 1, 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge. We have to learn and we have to grow closer to God. Can we all stand? Can we just all bow our heads and close our eyes this morning? And wherever you're at this morning, wherever you're going through, Will you just real fast just give up whatever you're going through to Christ? Whatever you're facing today, will you just give up and give to God? Will you get out of your corner and go to His corner this morning? To do what He is calling you to do, to go where He is calling you to go, even when it's uncomfortable, even when you don't want to? Go where He's calling you. 
Heavenly Father, I pray right now, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray for every single person here, Lord God. For every single person here has a soul, Lord Jesus. And I pray over them, Lord God. That they will begin to walk by faith and not by sight. That they will search you, Lord Jesus, with all their heart. That they will go after you. Even in that battle fatigue, they will open up their phone. They will get a phone number. They'll open up your word. They'll fall on their knees in prayer. Lord God, even in that battle fatigue, would you just meet them right where they are today? 